You took it all, and what did it cost, my friend? Everything. Or at least everything that could possibly matter to a lustful, stubborn man. Goodbye, cock and balls. And more importantly, of course, hello to you here in Crusader King's story. Somebody said that he became a eunuch in France and left his uh, most important assets behind. So that should be a Casus Belli for conquest. And my god, you do make a, a very fair point. We are at truce right now, but there's no reason that truce couldn't disappear. So from the temperature I'm getting in the room, everybody seems to love the fact that Tharpa Tharthi chose Albino as our dynastic trait with architect and ancestry because he's effectively made snow elves the standard skyrim snow elves which is pretty fantastic to say that we came from iceland so that's pretty good i liked it because it gave us another level of uniqueness that wasn't necessarily i wouldn't say necessarily bad or good just gave them that little bit extra but you're right it does make perfect sense in terms of story doesn't it sorry who's your heir oh he's pretty good lord valandor falkahanda some distant distant relative how distant Really distant. Oh, my God. A descendant of Threk. You love to see it. My man lives on. Oh, well, that's good. I'm glad that Threk gets a bit of dynastic justice, if nothing else. Uh, hello, Duke Valandor. Jesus, six generations later, and they still look like that. I have really done irre irreversible damage to this dynasty. I mean, look at his wife. And when everybody's marrying everyone they're related to, is there any wonder that the uh, that the Tharthi -tharth genes are so goddamn powerful? I mean, look at them all. Now, forgetting about uh, Tharthi Tharthi, Emperor Tharthi Tharthi, someone said rename Britannia to Elf Tania. Absolutely, I will as soon as I get the first opportunity to do so. I don't think we have permission to do that, uh, sadly, given that we aren't yet in charge. Maybe he will do it in between episodes at some point. You know, a little off-camera mining there. So, focusing on the important man then, Elrong the Beguiling. We have another roughly 20 years playing as Elrong, taking us up to 140 years played in game. And obviously, we're swapping character every 70 years, so it just about works out. Now, someone in the comments said uh, that over the course of that 20 years... I've got to find this son again, haven't I? Oh, sorry, this, uh, this grandchild of the joint bloodlines. Oh, I was looking for grandchildren, but technically, he's also our great-grandson. Erevan in... About 20 years time, of course, will be a playable character. So could be uh, incredible as our next player character. Maybe a good character to use for that Varangian Cassus Bellow that technically we haven't used yet, but of course have access to. Somebody said marry them to a character called Valoria. Valoria, if I'm not mistaken, was the one with uh, Valoria. Let's have a look here. Nope, that's not quite right, is it? Yes, there she is, your granddaughter, Valoria Falcahanda. She is the beautiful Amazonian genius High Elf. So marry them together. And I think it's a great idea to do this now. Totally agree with what you said. Let's put those together right now. Because that way, if our character dies, though, that, that betrothal will, will pretty much remain. It's very unlikely that I would ever break that unless it was for some very legitimate reason. So let's find Erevan here and get you two married ASAP, if you don't mind. Where are you? There you are. Perfect. Look at this. So this is another thing. I meant to bring it up a couple of episodes ago, but keep forgetting to mention it. It says that they are related, so there is a minus 66.2% risk of their children being inbred. Because, of course, they're both high elves, or, or one's an elf, one's a high elf. That one is minus 99% chance, and that one is 70% chance. It's like there's so much inbreeding negative that it overflows and goes back to uh, minus 66% chance instead of like a... Because if you took the average of that, it'd be like a what like a 30 percent chance obviously depending on the coefficient um without that being taken into account so yeah this is like more than safe perfectly safe perfectly fine and would you look at this this kid we are its double grandparent on both sides frightening terrifying in fact uh we're only its grandparent on one side this side so i, I feel like the inbreeding ship has sailed and that's not a ship that we're ever gonna have to worry about getting access to uh so prisoners can be runs who the hell is this person get out of here just to check our current political situation. We have West France here in Aquitaine, our immediate Christian neighbors who I was worried might holy war us around our little finger. We have hooks on both of them. We also have Princess Escalamonde, which is the uh, King of France's daughter and, of course, a relative of uh, the, the, the niece of the King of Aquitaine as well. So it's quite a good person to have just hanging around there in our prison. They're not going to bring the raiders back. I feel like the game isn't saving properly when I tell it to save and close. It's like it always goes back to the last autosave. Not that that's a big deal of course doesn't really matter too much oh yes no it was this because look there's the peasant revolt as well i don't think i did anything majorly important i'm trying to avoid doing anything majorly important at the end there so we're not left on like a cliffhanger or anything hello there how you doing let's get this wealth back i think i was going to go on an expedition if i'm not mistaken 
No, I just double checked. It's just history repeating itself. We left off on the 14th of May, 986, and now it's the 13th of June. So it was quite literally, we went out raiding, had a peasant revolt, and then the same thing happened a second time again. Very bizarre. A lot of the mysterious. Oh, the, the mysterious just though. What the hell? I'm so terribly confused. Am I going insane? Maybe I am. <laughs> ah! I've managed to find a locksmith with considerable renown who may claim to unlock. Uh, who many claim can unlock the chest. I see. Bring him the mysterious chest, and he says, The honor of opening the chest is all yours. We get uh, a good find, all said. The wait was worth it. It's a pile of coins and precious gems and other metals. Do we get money? Maybe we did get money immediately. I, I don't think we did. What the hell just happened? I'd send some points here before I get too carried away. Um, well, administrator, as we've discussed, isn't really super good. Architect could be very good, though. Uh, vassal tax com contribution. We, we have no vassals. We have no vassals. <laughs> we don't really need money. I hate to say it. I guess we'll just go all into architect then and keep going down that tree. I see nothing for intrigue. What did I pick for this one? Scientific? Didn't make any difference. Let's go anatomical studies, and that's fine. And then uh, danger minus 15, swordsmanship, tutelage, interaction. I love any option to uh, get us more stuff. Obviously, that's fantastic. Um, interaction, that's where we go to a... If I'm not mistaken, the way this works is we go up to somebody like a good swordsman and then ask them to train us. Convert me? Absolutely not. Sorry, I've got this backwards. This is one where we train, force train, like in the uh, Game of Thrones mod, our wards. Um, we should really take both of those children as a personal ward. See, we are genius. I think we'll let them just naturally see what, 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 uh, outcome they get for the education. We'll go for that one. There you go. So we'll educate you. And these two, that way the wards might become friends. They might become friends early on. Um, educate child. Yes, please. We don't need to abduct her. Perfect. Okay, that's good. I like that. And then we can educate them personally. We can train them in swordsmanship. I presume they have to be a certain age. I imagine I can't get this baby into sword fight. That probably wouldn't be very helpful. Um, before I forget, people did ask for a special name for those kids, and that's a very good point. I did say we would rename any kids that it was relevant to when we get them. Because, of course, our dynasty is so massive, we can't guarantee one person is going to take over. We'll lose names forever otherwise. Um, we're going to call you... Let's have a look here. I've got an absolutely enormous list of names. Uh, dummy instead of... Buddy the Elf, okay. Lunk, Lunk is good. <laughs> I do like that. We should be going for the intrigue names, to be fair. But Lunk is very simple. And then for you, uh, how about... Okay, I found one. I'm, I'm not I'm not giving these kids arguably thematically appropriate names. What I'm giving them are recognizable, solid, good names that we will be able to keep track of and remember for a generation. Shmigelf. Shmigelf, perfect. A much better name. Lunk and Smeagelf. What a power couple. I mean, I suppose with uh, the King of France's daughter in our prison, he's unlikely to go to war with us anyway. So let's cash out on that money and let's go on that expedition immediately. Because I think we've got one in our domain, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, very much so in Rohan. Let's go maximum funding, always maximum funding and party size. There is no greater and more important duty of an elf than to go and visit. Ah, interesting. Um, Do we want to get a claim on Paris? Probably not. I don't think so. When we've got an unused kingdom cast as Belli that we could use instead. Obviously, we're at truce with him. So, uh, I mean, we haven't got a truce against you. We, we do still have that, correct? You're out in activity already. I can't even double check. It doesn't matter. I'm 99% I'm sure we still have that. I don't know why it would have become invalidated or anything. Maybe us becoming a king, but I'm pretty sure we checked it after that. I find Evrandria looking wistful and complentative. Com Yes, that's how that's pronounced. Oh, uncle, I can't help but wonder, who am I? Falkahanda or Falkahanda? Well, um, of course, I'm your uncle. Sorry? Oh, uncle, I can't help but wonder who I am. Uh, Falkahanda or Falkahanda? Of course, I'm your uncle. You are a hostage, nothing more. Oh, right, she's the hostage in our court, and she's trying to ask whether or not she's our dynasty or or their dynasty, and she's confused and wondering why she's here, and we're saying, I'm your uncle, don't worry about it, except we probably literally actually are. Do you, she's like a very distant relative. She is actually legitimately a relative, so that event's a little confusing. Look who's arrived! None other than the big man himself. I mean, I say big man. Thartha Tharthi was enormous. He had quite the height to him, but apparently our guy is seven foot seven. <laughs> I was going to say, I thought Tharthi Tharthi was like, like six and a half foot, maybe closer to seven foot. I thought he was enormous. 
Jesus. But then it turns out we're actually way taller. Can we have a look at Tharta Tharthi's height from the... If I do like that and select him and go here? No, sadly not. Seven foot seven. I mean, we're enormous. We're terrifying. We're frightening. Oh, look. Another daughter born with blo both bloodlines. House Cerulean, House Valorith, Amazonian, Genius, and Pretty. Let me give you another name off my names, then, so we remember that you are the future of elven kind. Okay, okay, this one's pretty good. Thrandal. Instead of Thranduil, you get it. That's perfect. What a great name. Oh, it's a prowess fight. Actually, we're not bad at prowess. It's just, um, Tharthi Tharthi is unfathomable. He's probably the strongest man in the world. You know, I've got to have a look here quickly. Hang on, let's just have a look. Sort by prowess, please. And let's go, uh, the entire world. If you would. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Is it by a long way? The other elf is the next best prowess character. But even then, he's got 75. Tharthi Tharthi has 93. The greatest human duelist alive is Maharaja Sanpula, the city builder. This guy's cool as hell. Look at this. 47 prowess, the city builder. What a guy. Duke Ella and the stout. And then us. We're fifth? Wow. I didn't expect that to say that we've really done nothing much in the way of swords training, huh? Jesus, these people are insane. It's because they don't lose prowess with age, obviously. So we're just building up and building up, building up. Obviously, some humans might get access to that. Eventually, there's that dynasty legacy that lets you do it, as I recall. Sorry, yes, uh, Dartha Tharthi is our best. Yeah, they didn't stand a goddamn chance. Onwards. Cultural importance. Ah, nothing. But, of course, development for our capital is enormous. We've already picked all of the... I presume the cultural... Um, the, the cultural... Improvements that you can find are b b are based on the area of the world. That would make a lot of sense because finding something that allows you to grow seeds in tiger and forests is probably not so relevant if you're in the middle of Egypt, for example. Beautiful. The trial of wisdom. I am prepared. I am very wise. I go around in circles, always straight, but never complain, no matter where I am led. Ah. Uh, I go around in circles, but always straight ahead. Never complain, no matter where I'm led. An argument. That's not true. Arguments aren't always cyclical. A wheel makes perfect sense. A river obviously does not always go straight ahead. Uh, well, I mean, eventually it does, but that's not the point. I think it's got to be a wheel. Another. Ooh. You went to a room filled with curiosities, feeling the divine spark's presence thick in the air. A bow of unknown lumber and impressive craftsmanship. Look at that. We can recruit ranger high guards. Ooh. And then uh, upon coming of age, elves gain... The first level of the bow trait in Hastaluda gives a small health boost. Oh. Oh, well, that's sick. That's cool. Absolutely. We have embraced people of the bow tradition. Expedition finds nothing, but this might be all of it. Ah, 25 gold. Beautiful. We may have just found everything immediately right off the bat there. Expedition is finished. While you leave... With incalculable luxuries, you can't deny that perhaps the most important discoveries were both the knowledge you gained of the elves and the questions they have raised. Is that it, then? Are we are we done, do you think? I wonder. Because before, obviously, it would say, it becomes an elven holy site. But with this, I'm not entirely sure. It's in Rohan proper. Should we construct a holding there? Or maybe maybe build like a, build like a city or something? We need a tribe first, and we don't have the prestige for that. Huh. We'll try another expedition on it later on, see if we can find something else. Obviously, it kind of paid for itself there, too. Can Pardon my grandson. What's he been doing? Naughty Failmere. What do we know about you, huh? Known criminal. Because uh, he's an adulterer. Nah, you're okay. I'll just grant you a pardon there. You're all good. Listen, everybody makes a mistake. It'd be very um ironic of this guy to be judging other people for that. Children like Guardians, let's quickly do a little spring cleaning here. Any genius character is just immediately... On my list of people, we should be sorting by learning and then genius so that we've got, you know, on average, a very good outcome. I could be a bit more granular. I'm not going to bother. I think I think they're in safe hands with that. Got to stay on top of this control, but with everything converted now, that shouldn't take too long. In fact, are we all converted? Faith is totally converted. Culture is not quite. We've got a couple of counties left of Bretonic. So let's throw you over there. What are you doing? You're just hanging around in France. Yeah, I don't think we need to do that anymore. Do you remember I had her over there to convert their capitals to our religion to try and throw them off. I guess we could just keep expanding out from there. Baiting out those peasant revolts, that type of thing. 100% opportunities to get an unpressed claim. Possible side effects come to the duchy. But we did have that peasant revolt before, right? It, was it from that event? Am I remembering correctly? 
it's also complaining that it's because we have too few spouses. Um, well, no, that's not right. How do we marry more spouses at this point, then? We're not allowed. Send a recipient. Interesting. So it's it's saying that too few spouses should marry to negate the piety penalty. Is it significant? Minus one. Uh, it's not. It's it's not important because it's piety, but it is still relevant. Um. Well, that's frustrating because I can't seem to marry another lady. I'm afraid. Okay. Is this because I did some nonsense with our spouses before? Maybe it's because we are ascended tribal. Maybe it's just our location in the world. I'm not entirely sure. Let's find an unmarried, married lady in our court that maybe we wanna wanna marry instead. No, wait. I'm an idiot. It's because he's eunuch. Ignore me. I don't know what I'm talking about. I've never played this game before. Okay. Ah, uh, ah, oh, Weenia. How could I forget? Speaking of eunuch, oh, we can't torture for a little while yet. Is there anyone else in prison? I feel like we probably got all the dark insights, so we could we could move on. I, I feel like this is unnecessary cruelty. I mean, as long as they're human, it's not, you know, that's not a problem at all. Uh, you might gain some dark insights. Maximum of five each. Beautiful. There's a bit more prowess. Uh, as long as it says you might gain some, then it's worth doing. Another intrigue one for torturing Princess Scalamond. Don't think we got anything that time, but that's okay. Fine. Cool. How are we looking with that dark insight then? So, three of each. Three of each. That makes perfect sense. I think we will finish our architect then and then move on to the, the leadership as well. Unity through diversity. I don't like it, but... Ooh. Founder? Negotiate trade agreement. Chance of reinforcing congenital traits. I, I Again, I can only assume that, that that's this character's direct descendants. Declare as heir could also be awesome. Destiny's balance. Chance of inheriting good congenital traits. Well, how old on though? That must affect this character's children because it's obviously him with the perk interesting either way let's go for this one then commerce maestro negotiate trade agreement interaction so is that with other rulers negotiate trade agreement oh with a hook he doesn't have a choice it just gives us holding taxes oh interesting so we, uh, it's probably calculated on their economy let's have a look here who's doing quite well spain seems to be doing pretty well for themselves the pope I was going to say, you might not agree to that too much, huh? Al Andalus then? Fine. Negotiate a trade agreement with them. They will accept, or, or they're quite likely to accept. 10%, 6%. So we're making only 6% from that one, really. It was better to go for Aquitaine at that point, huh? wonder what determines that. Is it the difference between our two economies, perhaps? Whoa. Italy will give us 12%, but they only get 4 Serene Doge Bruno of Italy. Republic. Ah, now that makes sense. Okay, what about Venice, dare I ask? 7%, 9%. Okay, so Italy. If we can get a hook on Italy and maybe get that going for us. You got it. Listen, he's got this round. He fought hard to get this round coming up from account. We've got to fight to defend it now. And we've got to make it glorious. Glorious, beautiful, and elven. We should probably go get a bit more money. So let's go and visit the Bank of Aquitaine. Ah, oh, sorry about that. You know it had to be done. Truth or torment. Ah, oh, Princess Escalamond. If we could drive her mad... She's willing to offer us a secret, but sadly, the torture must continue. There we are. Perfect. Ah, she got possessed. Oh, shit. That means that the king of France's daughter, we have turned into a possessed crazy person. And then the king of Aquitaine's son, and I believe heir, we turned into a lunatic. <laughs> and then the king of France, actually, I don't know if you noticed that, has had another son. Prince Giles, stuttering Prince Giles. Let's get him abducted and let's put him in prison and let's turn him into a lunatic as well. Sow the seeds of dissent. We're building up on the religious aspect. We're using his intrigue side to help undermine them politically by setting up the next heir as an incapable ruler. Oh, she got out. She got out, but ultimately, do I care? Again, this is exactly what happened when we turned the other guy into a lunatic. She's escaped now that she's possessed. That's fine. Dear father, who are you? Sorry? Tharthi Th Th the second of Ayrshire. I call upon you, uh, join me in the peasant revolt. Oh dear, he's he's fighting against a peasant revolt of 489 troops. Oh, for God's sake. Love and manipulate subjects. Ah, well done, my wife. I guess we probably should go and bail him out. But to be fair, this guy has for worse odds and come out on top. Ah, <sighs> Honestly, suffering is good for success. Let's leave him to it. Oh, they've discovered our scheme. That's our less important scheme, arguably. I mean, it's, an, it's a really nice trade deal. It would be fantastic for us. It was holding tax, right? Not battle tax. Otherwise, it's not quite as good. 
my what with who? My trade agreement with King. I didn't make a trade agreement with him. King uh, Heli ensures a steady flow of merchants and nobility visiting his lands, flogging their loot and importing foreign luxuries. Decidedly less common as an expedition from West France here making its way to Brittany. Often, he, uh, often something in the event of vans. It can be rare to see so many distant foreigners with hands unbound. The leaders of such expeditions have managed to garner an audience to beg for patronage, an eloquent priest and a keen-minded merchant. Interesting. So these people just want to join us from France. Um, well, the priest can go to hell. Who's that accompanying you at the back? Clemenge. Hello. Uh, Flamboyant Trickster. Move along, foreigners. My agreement is with Hailey. I feel like this is a this is a trap. Sending a priest to my court. Are we, I, I mean, I'm not going to swap out one of my children for this guy. Absolutely not. No, take the prestige. Look down. We're elven superiority, after all. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have even considered that. A uh, ting meat. Ting meats are a necessary chore for any decent king. Three men in the area turning up to discuss local affairs, market, and jostle for this privilege or that. Struggle to follow the details through all the yelling, but it seems the men from Cornwall are protesting the uh, their innocence in a spate of drunken arsons in Leon. Um... A good corner while I'm going to take this from Leon. We're going to make them fight, but they approve of it. They'll all tie themselves out eventually. Yeah, let's just just let them do their thing. We're not we're not concerned about petty squabbles of peasants. That's absolutely below him. Ah, the county of Berry is converted. God, this is cruel, isn't it? This is a level of cruelty unfathomable. Could you imagine doing this in multiplayer? You you would lose friends. You would absolutely lose friends. Um, I want to see where we've actually converted there. So let's go up to here next. Thank you. Oh my god, she's do immediately done it. Oh my god. <laughs> okay then. Let's move you over again, shall we? Holy crap. Uh, move you up to right there. I wonder if it's based on, say, um, further or hostility, perhaps? Or acceptance? I'm not sure. Weird. Okay, we'll keep an eye on that. This is, this is actually insane. She's like doing it instantly. She's doing it instantly. And then we use our conquest cast as Belle on France here. Wow, I didn't expect this kind of outcome though. Hold on, sorry. Show me the uh, the, the map mode. It's hard to keep up with where we have converted. Bloody hell. Uh, Yeah, okay. We'll head up to Bois next. Only a 5% chance of grabbing sweet... Prince Charles of West France here. No, we can't do that. We can't do that. It's it's money down the drain. It's too much of a too much of an enormous risk. Ooh, a divergent elven culture of Shropshireite. <laughs> oh no, that's terrible. Um, what did they diverge? Venture guilds. What did they What did they lose or gain? Sorry, it's hard to keep track with all this stuff here. Um, no, no, no. Go back to Elven. God damn you. If we do that and then that, we can hopefully just click between them freely. There we are. Shops right, Elven. So they've, they've lost Aleron Etiquette and taken on like a human. They've taken Eye for an Eye and Medicinal Herbalist. You fool. Oh, we'll see how the situation develops. Hopefully that will be dealt with swiftly. No! Damn it. The plot was uncovered and we have failed in our agreement. Okay, I mean, what if I just, just kidnap him? What if we just kidnap him, huh? 5% chance? He's got any family to speak of? Well, that's annoying, isn't it? Okay, never mind. Just keep going. Ah, oh, beautiful. We've siege boards so managed to grab some. I don't think they were relevant, actually. That's unfortunate. Really, we're doing this only for the prestige, because that's way more important than cold hard cash right now. I think that's more than good enough. Let's head home. Uh, sure thing. Sure thing. My great-granddaughter. Albino, yeah, that was obviously not in the family tree before. His son wants to get married. Okay, I mean, they're, they're fine. Yeah, okay, why not? There you are. Beautiful, look at that. 208 prestige, 208 gold. You would never have believed that would have happened. Ooh, years ago. Sorry, we can form a continental holy order. Ah. Well. City of Ray makes the most sense because that's right on the border with both of them. Absolutely, yes. 500 gold? Absolutely no. I need to spend that on other things, like upgrading our capital, turning it into something nice. Come on, any Dutch buildings whatsoever, correct? None at all until our culture catches up, but hopefully it won't be too long. Maybe upgrade our castle if we're going to stick with this, this guy's capital for a while. We can't. We don't have battlements. Oh, God. 
Okay, maybe I don't have much to spend this stuff on. We'll put a tribal hold there, because that obviously doesn't really cost as much. We've been invited to the royal court. Uh, the woman approaches me. I represent the local community of Vans. In the past few minutes, our cemetery have been plagued with the disappearance of bodies. Your court physician, Alandra, has been caught red-handed hauling them away. Why didn't you invite me, Alandra? Fresh living bodies make for better test subjects. Um, listen. Listen. The E is not going to be that blatant. No, he is that blatant, though. He's arbitrary and stubborn. And is very clearly happy to flaunt it. Okay, you know what? Um, fresh living bodies make for better test subjects. He's not necessarily tyrannical. He's done a lot of tyrannical things, but not necessarily against his own people. Was she human? I should have double-checked that as well. Uh, my ally, the once mighty Elendar, arrives unannounced, covered in filth and manure. The flatulent toad, my former heir, Duke Alaron, ousted me from my realm, and I have fled here for my life. Elendar the Wicked. Unless a man as dreadful as you gives me the roof to live under, I'll be rotting in a ditch. Uh... Making my footstool? Sure. He didn't actually become my footstool. That's very annoying. Peasant man stands before me, informing the court of his plate. Are you human? He is. Uh, no, we cannot afford to spend gold on this matter. Goodbye. That's an easy way to rule court, isn't it? Oh, hello. Uh, Amazonian pretty elf. Yes, another standard elf to go in my list of elves. So with court level four, sorry, there was something good that happened there, right? Promote cultural acceptance. Fact, this okay, so it was not actually that useful. Inspiration. Very competent lady. No, thank you. Let's focus on maneuvering ourselves into a position whereby we might be able to go to war with France. Ranger High Guard versus the Fey Archers. They are basically just better in every way. Counter heavy infantry, heavy cavalry, archer cavalry. Skirmish and spearmen. Okay, so different counters. Same terrain effects as far as I can tell. Sure, okay, we'll make some more Ranger High Guard. That's fine. Let's pay off all of our obligations and use that to have something that would give us... Oh, we should have a grand wedding for those two kids when they're old enough. Do not let me forget that. Uh, let's have, I think, another feast to get some prestige here. Again, this is just so we can build up our armies ready for this war with France. Duke Elendar the Handsome. He seems like a man that we might want to befriend. Maybe for his... Uh, maybe for his abilities. Maybe for his uh, troops. <laughs> kind of nice. We'll send our troops out raiding again, huh? Why not? Two more perks for our stewardship lifestyle. There you go. Popular opinion plus 50 means we can be a bit crueler to the uh, to the humans of our realm and not have to worry about it too much, huh? Hard rule and dueling, uh, enduring hardships. Ah, uh, Neither. Stalwart leader. Ooh, yeah. Stalwart leader would be good at this point, especially if we are going to war with France. We're the, one of the best fighters in the world. One of the best leaders, or probably the best army leader, uh, leader in our realm. Did you actually convert them, though, that time? Or did it, did it not fire? Um, no, it didn't fire that time. Look at that. Interesting. I wonder what it's based on then. Okay, well, we'll just leave you there. Carry on. Ah, the great table seating. The upper nobility on the dice gave a loud crack in a moment later. It gave under the weight the food and gilded decoration. Elendar and I ended up talking all evening and agreed it should not be the last time we feasted and laughed in each other's company. We became friends with him. Beautiful. Obviously, I've cut the army raiding there so that we can pay for this feast. Uh, lose stress? No. Um, chance to be seen the great and good. I, honestly, I would love to try that at some point. Every guest that shares a trait in common with you gains 20 opinion. It's basically everybody there. But it's not super necessary compared to the prestige. Isselwen. Hello. Uh, my sister-in-law. She's a human. No, she's not. She's an elf. That's good. Just double checking there. What a woman. And then... Ah, Duke Eldwolf praises us. We gain 75 prestige. Beautiful. It's all going into troops. And with that, it is done. Up to 719. Ah, oh, Eager Reveler. Cool. Yes, no, that makes sense given the amount of feasts we've been kind of forced to have. Uh, we can take Dexterous Fisherman for 1,000 prestige or just fishing logistics giving embarkation cost minus 10%. I like that. Especially because we've got to go quite far away to raid places that haven't been raided before. There we go. Took a little while, but that is blah as well. Hello. My spies have informed me of a hunter causing a ruckus at a local tavern. Oh, someone's drawing a map for him. I'll bring him to me. I can jog his memory. The murder Elagast scheme was exposed. I'm not really too concerned about that, thank you. Oh, and look at all of these. Uh, no, you're good. Although, if we've got a truce with him. No, that was Aquitaine. Yeah, well, that's fine. Uh, give me give me your money. That's fine. We might want to go to war with Aquitaine too. It depends who's got the bigger realm, right? Um, negotiate alliances with everybody. Yeah, honestly, why not? I'm all right with that. A wave of excitement rushes over your court. A tournament champion, Celestia. Bloodline of House Gwynthorn. Oh, my God. Stress gain is up by 35%. Stress loss is lower, but development growth, domain limit, and stewardship is amazing. Oh, shit. Seek her out. 
Seek her out and get her into this dynasty. Okay. 67% chance we could just give her 50 gold. I'm going to try it. Oh, we failed. But that's okay. It's money well spent to get that bloodline as far as I'm concerned. This guy really is the bloodline crafter, isn't he? My God. So let's arrange a marriage between you and someone urgently. I don't care who. Elendar? Sure. He's got Valorith and she's got Gwynthorn. So that actually works out quite well. Let's also pin you so that we don't forget who you are. I'll, I'll give you a position in court as well, actually, just to help elevate you above all the chaff that's hanging around. Uh, antiquarian? You want to be my Antiquarian? You any good at that? What's her name? Celestia? Um, she's average. Okay, I'm not going to do that. You can be my... She, um, you have to be quite exceptional to be all these other geniuses in court at anything, sadly. Um, Arendor, yeah. We should probably have a full court at this point. There's no reason not to. Alandra, there you go. Master of the horse. Okay, well, that's that. Royal Architect is obviously beautiful to have. Yeah, okay, Melanthia, there you go. High Almoner. I might just have to give her just like, uh, just accept that she's going to be pretty terrible. God damn, we should have had all these filled in for a long, long time. Here you go. Cupbearer, Seraphina. Ah, oh, Celestia is good. What's Cupbearer do? Fix our grandeur. <sighs> go on, then. I don't think it's super essential, so there you are. Who wants to be called Jester? Uh, you can be. Yeah, okay, there you are. We've got court musician. Average is better. I'm only, honestly, it's better than none. It's quite freaking. You don't have any at all. Seraphina for a bodyguard. Personal champion can be Robbie, who I think is also a spy master. Arwinia could be executioner. Interesting. The character's crimes are forgiven. Interesting. 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 What do you think? What do you think about that? I think it's dangerous. She certainly... Uh, honestly, it's, it's, a, it's a nice bit of um, poetic license. Oh, uh, Winnie, you love chopping things off, do you? Kapow. Executioner. I like that. I think he'd, I think he'd just enjoy the silliness of, of having that set up. So I'm all right with that. We need a poet to make court poet, funnily enough. But that's okay. So we filled up our entire court then. That's amazing news. My monthly income has dropped to 2.7 a month. Oh, dear. Okay. Let's let the armies rebuild a little bit. We don't We don't need that so much, of course. And let's get our rangers upgraded. Um, stick you in Nantes, I suppose. So that's our army. I, I mean, ultimately, what we want to start doing now, then, is probably getting rid of pikemen and swapping them out for, like, those mosswood riders or whatever's good for counter. But, of course, swapping some of them out here and there wouldn't hurt. And we just keep laying the foundations for a successful conquest across France. I presume that's an empire unifying maybe Brittany, West Francia, Aquitaine, that type of thing. What has become the kingdom of the Empire of Francia? Yeah, there it is. We also need Burgundy as well, but that's not a major issue. The second Elven Empire popping up. Wow, could you imagine? And then our next branch takes Italy. Our next branch takes Germania. What a mess this could end up being. So we haven't done a huge amount today. It's been a lot of foundational stuff, a lot of conversion, building up our armies. We've, we've maxed out man-at-arms, which I think is pretty good. Ready for this big war that we go to against France, whether we want to kill the current king of France to break the truce, whether we want to do it a different way. Try and set it up so that they're in a very weak position, or maybe we just want to wait for Aquitaine to swallow France up, and then we kill two birds with one stone. Who knows? But of course, most importantly, our bloodline merging is working perfectly well. We might even be able to introduce a third bloodline in this character's lifetime, which would be insanity. That would be so goddamn good if we could pull that off. Either way, we are going to call it there for today. Thank you all for joining me here in Elven Destiny. Don't forget to go and give a like and a, th a thumbs up and everything else there is to do on the Elven Destiny mod and, and say your thanks and appreciate incredible mods that we're having a huge amount of fun with personally I, I i love that i love the idea of this the theme of this it's always something fun about building your own culture from scratch is why i did a lot of those kind of challenge runs back in ck2 where you rebuild rome from nothing resurrect the culture from valeria and etc etc so this is always it's an easy win isn't it it's always such a great playthrough that i'm enjoying it in a, in a, a tremendous amount thank you to the patrons for allowing me all the time in the world to do everything I need to do here on this very channel. Thank you to Rock Death Raven, Sisere, Cucumber Colored Carabiner, Christian Copis, Anti001, Pokemon Backer, Floofy Prawn, Rolando Secondo, Harpio, Matman, Commissar Fox, Ash Suna, Ites, Christopher Peck, El Zilcho, Suba the Tuba, Box Snadger, Gamerman7799, Nancy Drow, Chief Werewolf, Night Rouge, Brambio, Danny the Dandelion, Mostly Harmless, and 
Roan for their support at the executive producer days over on Patreon. Thank you for joining me today in our slow build up to what I hope will be an, uh, an awesome victory to go from count to uh, double king. Maybe even emperor would be a great play, I think. Thank you as well to J520,000, Audrey Hershenson, Mikey J187, Erotha, Loquette217, Dyn Dynios, Dyn Dynisatan. I assume that's how you say that. Mithrin, Oliver, The Merp, Crowd Slayer, Zero Seven, Layforce, Toasty Buns, No Thoughts, Head Empty, MW, and Shredo as well. See you all next time.